So the first one we're going to talk about is social evolutionism or cultural evolutionism. And I believe your book just calls it evolutionism. Okay, so if you hear that term at all within anthropo anthropological theory, that's this theory we're talking about. Okay. Um, so essentially, I have this summed up in a quote um, coming from a different textbook that says, All societies pass through stages from primitive state to a complex civilization. Cultural differences are the result of different evolutionary stages. Okay, that's a very simple, kind of sums it up for you. So basically, social evolutionism just states that every single society will pass from a very primitive state to, bar to barbarism and then to civilization. And that any differences we might see in these cultures are products of the different stages that they're in. Okay, and so they're not differences in um, adaptation or a different way of doing things. It's just that that culture is at a different stage than the than another. Okay. So this theory is built on ideas that come from the Enlightenment period. So in the 18th century, um, Montesquieu suggested that human societies pass through a few different stages. So starting with hunting or savagery, then moving on to herding and barbarism, followed by civilization. In the 19th century, anthropologists Tyler and Morgan adopted Montesquieu's ideas, okay, and this is at the time when Europe is exploring other cultures, um, and then anthropology, like we said, is arising to help study these new people, okay, but they're using this theory of cultural evolution, okay, to study where people are placing cultures along this scale from savagery to civilization. Okay. So it's built on Enlightenment thought, okay, that time period, and then also remember that anthropology during this time period, um, the 18th and 19th centuries, was being influenced by Darwin's work um, with evolution. Okay, so um, industrialization showed us that culture could change, that culture was able to adapt and was fluid, but we didn't know how it changed. So then evolution comes along, and as evolutionary theories are adopted into fields outside of um, biological um, fields, outside of biology and things like that, we start to use evolutionary theory to explain cultural change and changes within societies. Okay, so this theory is built on a combination of those ideas. Okay, it's also built on some cross-cultural, historical, and archaeological evidence that suggested cultures passed through these stages or that all cultures existed at some point in the same stage. Okay, but Tyler and Morgan had slightly different views on social evolutionism. They both fit into this category and they are the main scholars associated with social and cultural evolution, um, but they had slightly different views. So Tyler believed that different people were equally capable of developing or progressing and that you couldn't move backwards along these scales. So once the culture moved from savagery to barbarism, there was never any degeneration back to savagery. Okay, um, and that, like the theory suggests, it's evolving from very simple society to very complex society. And he believed in these three stages: so savagery, barbarism, then civilization. Also, in the idea of psychic unity, this is a very key phrase. So know this one. Um, it's just basic similarities in the mental framework of people would lead to the, the discovering of the same solutions to the same problems, but independent from each other. So two societies with no connection to each other would create the same solution to the same problem because of the mental similarities in all humans. Okay, and he also believed in diffusion, so borrowing um, one cultural trait from another. Remember we talked about that culture can change through um, innovation, invention, Links changes or diffusion. Right, diffusion is um, cultural traits moving from one society to another as a result of contact between the two. So Tyler believed in that as well. On the other hand, um, Lewis Henry Morgan took it a step further. So he believed in the three stages: so savagery, barbarism, and civilization. But he divided savagery and barbarism into three substages: so upper, middle, and lower within each. So you would have um, lower savagery, middle savagery, upper savagery, then you'd move on to lower barbary, middle barbary, upper barbary, and then to civilization. And so he got very specific and established a technological development at each stage. Okay, so middle savagery was marked by fish in the diet um, and the discovery of fire. Upper savagery, you saw the beginning of the use of the bow and arrow. 
Low, lower barbarism, there was pottery. Okay, people were making pottery. Middle barbarism is marked by animal domestication and irrigated agriculture. Okay, so a change in agricultural states there. Upper barbarism is noted by the manufacture of iron. And then civilization comes along with the phonetic alphabet. Okay. So he suggested that this is how you could mark societies. Um, and you would move through each of these. Okay. But none of this has actually been supported by any ethnographic research. So no real research supports this theory. Okay. And then it's important to remember that all evolutionary schemes like this were unilineal. Right? That just means that you have a set, a set of stages that all groups will pass through. And so all groups from past and present that are at the same level were nearly identical. Okay, so if you say there's an extinct society, we want to know how they lived. They were at middle barbarism. And so then you find a society today that you would classify as middle barbarism. You could say they're pretty much identical, so now we know how that extinct society lived. No more real research is needed, so we figured it out. Okay, that doesn't work, right? And so we know that this theory is outdated, it doesn't work, but it's an important step in cultural anthropology and an important way how we started to try to understand how culture changed and how societies changed. Okay. So the key concepts in here that I need you to know are unilinear of social evolution, that is the theory, okay, cultural evolutionism. So this is culture evolving or developing in a uniform, progressive manner passing through a series of stages to arrive at a common end. Okay. Then know the psychic unity of mankind, so the belief that the human mind is essentially the same everywhere, which would result in the same solutions to similar problems. Okay. And then know the stages of development, savagery, barbarism, civilization. All right. Within this, um, we just talked, we're going to talk about methods here in a minute. So the most common method in this theory that they would use is the comparative method, and this is just comparing different societies.